Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we're continuing with stripping down the Chevelle. In the last episode, I gutted out most of the interior, so if you haven't had a chance to check that video out yet, I'll put a link down in the description below. Today, we're gonna switch gears though and focus on the exterior. I need to get the entire body stripped down. So front end, doors, back end, trim, you name it. All things considered, the car is in really good shape. It can always be worse, but because of some of the rust issues it does have, mainly out back, I wanted to kick this project off with the rust repair and bodywork side of things. So the first step is to get everything stripped down in preparation for all of that. I'm basically going to be bringing the car down to a bare shell over a number of episodes so I can show you guys key portions of the disassembly and this will also serve as a phenomenal reference for myself when I go to put everything back together. A friendly piece of advice, if you're tearing stuff down to the level that I'm doing and you're not filming it, take lots and lots of pictures beforehand, during, and after. You will thank yourself later when you're not scratching your head trying to figure out where did that go? But anyway, there's a lot of work to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'd also like to extend a very special shout out to Original Parts Group for their interest in partnering with me on the restoration side of this build. They offer pretty much anything and everything that you need to redo one of these cars from the ground up. It's pretty awesome. A big thanks also to O'Reilly Auto Parts and Valvoline. Together, with the support of all of you watching the series, we're going to have a whole lot of fun with this one. Keep an eye out too. Throughout the series, I'll have links in the description to highlight parts that are going into the car. So if you'd like to learn more about anything in particular, the resource will be there. The hood's definitely not gonna be fun trying to take off by myself, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. With the hood out of the way, it's a lot easier to see into all the nooks and crannies of the engine bay, so I went ahead and got my pictures taken. Now that that's done, I'm going to start tackling the grill. All right, now let's work on getting the driver's side fender off. I don't know, we might be in for a Nasty surprise in there. Now we're really making some progress.
Well, I can confidently say it looks like I dodged a bullet. This is one of those Chevelle problem areas, along with, you know, portions of the firewall, this shoulder can tend to rot, and I was worried about the lower portions down below here behind where the fenders were rotten, and aside from just being full of a bunch of crud, the body is perfect. I mean, you cannot ask for better than this. It still has the original paint on that shoulder, and it's a little dirty, but it's actually still pretty shiny. What happens is that over the years you have leaves, dirt, and crud collecting in the bottom of these fenders and they'll basically rot from the inside out. So you see all of the crud that was in there. So I count myself very, very lucky that we don't have to do any body repairs up here. Now that's more like it. The only other area up here I was concerned about in regards to rust is underneath this stainless plate right here. So let's go ahead and take that off and check it out. Turns out there was some rust underneath that piece after all. I guess it's not awful, but I really don't know the full extent of it until I pull the windshield out, so that's gonna be fun. So I wasn't going to pull the windshield out yet because honestly I've never pulled glass before and I still gotta figure out how to cut the butyl seal that goes around the perimeter, but I was messing with the windshield a second ago, and I don't think the seal is actually holding the windshield on anymore, which would make sense because every time it rained, this car would just flood with water. So I'm gonna attempt to see if I can actually pull it out without cutting the seal. Well, here goes nothing. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> I can't believe that. Well, that sure saved a whole lot of work. It looks like the worst of it's that bottom corner right there, but the main channel where the windshield sits looks pretty solid. I don't think we're going to have to replace the whole section. We might be able to get away with cleaning everything up and patching as needed. Since we're on the subject of glass, I'm going to see if the rear window will come out as easy as the front. I will say there are a couple specialty tools out there that'll help make removing the window trim and the window itself a lot easier and safer. The thing is, like I talked about in the first episode back in June, this is one of the worst areas of rust on the whole car because the sides and the bottom of the window frame, as far as I can tell, are completely rotten away. That's why I've been able to get away with not using the window removal tool. But as far as the reveal molding or the window trim, the clips that hold them in place are also rotten away. So I've just been kind of able to slowly pry it up and break them loose and, and pull the trim out that way. But if your car is in good shape, it's definitely wise to equip yourself appropriately so you don't mess something up. I would venture to guess the main reason why everything in the back is so much more rusty than the front is because of this rotten window frame. The trunk pan, the rear shelf, just all of it. Water must have been pouring in this thing for many, many years.
all of the weather strip channels around the trunk are gonna have to be reworked as well. Some are better than others, but they're all pretty crusty. Well, it looks like the tail lamp buckets actually curl up underneath the rear bumper, so I think I'm gonna have to pull the bumper off before I can get the buckets out. All right, everything back here is stripped. Once I take off the doors and the side window trim, we'll be in good shape. Last for today, the front bumper. With that out of the way, the body is pretty much stripped. Obviously this is going to be a ton of work, but I'm really glad to be going to this length with the project because as you guys saw, there was a bunch of other little issues that were uncovered by taking off body panels and trim pieces and whatnot. So this thing is basically gonna be rebuilt from the ground up, frame off restoration. It's gonna be better than new by far, especially with the upgrades that we have planned for it. But I am extremely excited about this. Now it's just a matter of ordering some more metal parts from Original Parts Group and getting the game plan together as far as the body work. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's always a lot more content where that came from. We've got some more disassembly to do on this thing and it probably won't be too much longer before we dive into a little bit of engine content. So I'll keep you guys up to date on that. A big thanks once again to Original Parts Group for all of their support as well as you all for watching the videos. It really means a lot. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.